touch the plush. Good boy. Hey guys, just a super quick reminder before this video starts to make sure to go to makeship.com to go ahead and get a limited edition Run Illuminati plushie. This thing is only available for less than two weeks. It is a pre-order and once it's done, it's never coming back. So make sure to grab one before it ends. Again, go to makeship.com, do a little scroll real quick and you will find it right there. Make sure to pick one up. It ships internationally and to all locations. Love you guys. Let's get into the video. Hi, Casper. <laughs> I'm trying to take a I'm trying to take a cute video of the plush. You gotta wait just a minute. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Blair or Illuminati, and today we're going to be talking about the now defunct Holiday Magic MLM. And I thought this would be a, like a cute MLM, if that's even a thing uh, to cover for the holidays, because I was like, oh, holiday magic. It's going to be a festive MLM. It's going to be like timely for the month of December. Well, apparently that's not really what this MLM is actually about. So any thoughts of gingerbread houses and stringing up lights on a Christmas tree, like that's not happening, but hey, I can dream, right? But anyway, let's jump right into it and explain what Holiday Magic was actually all about. So Holiday Magic was an MLM that was founded in 1964 and collapsed only a decade later. So there's not like a massive timeline to really go through here, but I think it's still important to talk about how this MLM started. So let's begin with the company's founder before we get into what made the MLM actually fall apart. According to one source, William Penn Patrick was not only a snake oil salesman, but a man who ran a pyramid scheme and a cult. So that's one hell of a way to start this off. William Penn Patrick was a charlatan and entrepreneur. Born on March 31st, 1930, he lived until the age of 43, dying when his private plane crashed on June 9th, 1973. And Jesus Christ, as a side note, what a way to go, holy shit but I digress, back to the article. Living his entire life in California, he operated three controversial businesses before running against Ronald Reagan for a nomination for governor of California. A true eccentric, William Penn Patrick was the embodiment of the snake oil salesman. From bankruptcy to dying tragically in his private jet, we have to dive into his three fraudulently successful business ventures to understand the man. And yep, you guys all heard that right. Today is a very cool, very special three for one sale here on Multi-Level Mondays. Because even though we're diving into holiday magic, there are two other businesses that this guy ran that were all equally as shitty. Holiday magic was the first one, so that's where we're obviously going to start. This infamous story starts in 1964 when William Penn Patrick was on a stroll around the neighborhood and passed by a man selling fruity cosmetics out of his garage. Apparently taken with it, he bought the entire stock for $16,250. With inflation for today's money, that's closer to $134,000, which that's nice if you can just carry that amount of money around. But back then the product was called Zoline and with that stock, he started Holiday Magic. But Holiday Magic was not just an MLM. It was a pyramid scheme. A pyramid scheme is an MLM that fulfills the following requirements. The only way for consultants to make a profit is to recruit other consultants. Consultants are required to inventory load or constantly inventory to profit. Consultants are operating in a saturated market or a market where there are more sellers than buyers and consultants are required to sell products for a fixed price or price fixing. But we'll get into the pyramid scheme in just a moment. But for now, let's get back to his companies. Just like we've seen with a lot of MLMs, the people at the very beginning make a lot of money, luring others and then, well, you know, scamming them. One website called Online MLM Community that unfortunately advocates for MLMs puts it in a much more pleasant light. And here's what they say. During the time of startup, the federal government really did not have any guidelines or regulations on multi-level marketing companies. Penn Patrick found some great people to jump into his holiday magic opportunity. Many people loved the products. Not only did people want to purchase the products, but they also wanted to join the business because of people such as Zig Ziglar and Glenn Turner, known MLMers, were doing so great with holiday magic, surely they could too. 
Individuals were buying in with the opportunity to make their riches selling holiday cosmetics and at-home cleaning products. William Penn Patrick taught a ruthless approach to doing business. It seemed high pressure and attacking other companies did work at that juncture of time, but people have learned that is not the system to use now. Patrick discovered another way to make money and also train the holiday magic distributors. In 1967, Patrick wrote a book that was titled Happiness and Success Through Principle. After doing so, he developed a training institute and company called Leadership Dynamics. Leadership Dynamics was separate from Holiday Magic, but representatives were encouraged to pay the $1,000 to take the course. Also, those who held top positions with Holiday Magic were required to take the course. And for the record, this article that I just kind of read a little bit out to you guys comes from a website that is pro MLM and there is still so much to unpack in just that alone. So let's take it one step at a time. First of all, I'm not at all surprised that an MLM website could put on such rose colored glasses while they wrote this. It's true, the FTC didn't have serious regulations about pyramid schemes at the time. The FTC says on their own website that, the commission took its first concerted action against pyramid schemes in the 1970s during a boom of home-based businesses and MLMs or direct selling. One-on-one -on -one marketing became common for many consumer items, from cosmetics to kitchenware and Tupperware parties became an icon of the era. Unfortunately, the rise in legitimate multi-level marketing was accompanied by a surge in pyramid schemes. Those schemes played off the popularity of MLM or network sales, but paid more attention to networking than selling actual goods. So these pyramid schemes weren't cracked down on until the 70s or so, and as we'll see with Holiday Magic, but that doesn't mean it's okay or ever has been okay. Plus, this MLM website even calls William Penn Patrick's methods ruthless, whereas frankly, I'd call it downright fraud. Who the hell makes their own workers pay for their own training? I've heard of employees having to pay for training that's required to do a job in the first place, like certifications. But for Patrick to make up his own required course and then demand his employees to pay $1,000 to do it, like, you can't tell me that doesn't sound shady as all hell. But unfortunately and expectedly, things do get much worse. William Penn Patrick wasn't just a businessman, he also delved into politics. In 1966, he ran against Ronald Reagan for a nomination to run for governor of California. That was until he was sued for libel and was forced to pay $300,000 to Melvin Field. In today's money, that would be $2.3 million. And as for the third business he had, well, this was one of the most ridiculous of the bunch. Mind Dynamics was third and less well-known company of William Penn Patrick and Alexander Everett. Like Leadership Dynamics, the company hosted professional development workshops with strong religious undertones. Professional development workshops include aspects of mind control and hypnosis. Although not much is known about the company's actions, it was charged with fraud and practicing medicine without a license. And in case you couldn't tell, this is where the cult portion comes in that I kind of maybe briefly mentioned at the beginning. And it gets quite disturbing at parts too, as this one New York Times article details. Then there is a series of cases filed against Mr. Patrick because of the operation of one of his companies, Leadership Dynamics Institute. Some of these have been settled out of court and others are in various stages of preparation for trial. The Leadership Dynamics Institute was begun in the late 1960s as a program to develop latent sales potential among persons involved in Holiday Magic or in other Patrick companies, such as Bob Cummings Incorporated, which sells vitamins, Alexander Taylor, which sells clothing, or Stay Power, an oil additive, all based on the Patrick-designed pyramiding sales plan. Executive development training is an experience an experience designed to free you. There was an encounter group aspect to the program. The enrollees would gather at a motel, having paid $1,000 each for a long weekend. Instructors would direct the sessions and sometimes the results were disastrous. Sometimes students were stuffed into coffins and others were strung up on a cross. When he was questioned under oath about this, Mr. Patrick said no one was nailed to a cross, 
They were tied, he said. Question, how was one individual tied to the cross? Answer, well, how you would normally tie someone to the cross. Mr. Patrick was asked if anyone suffering from claustrophobia was ever forced into a coffin. He replied, well, let me say this, if they did, they got over it. And yep, that's, just take that in for a moment. So according to him, it is perfectly fine to shove someone with claustrophobia into a coffin because, you know, haha, it's so quirky, it's, it's gonna make them get over it. Like, <laughs> what the actual hell am I actually reading? And how is this a business in any sense of the word? Now, I know people can overuse the word cult when it comes to MLMs a lot because MLMs really do walk that fine line in their like business methods, but you can't tell me this isn't at least a little bit off. But for now, let's get back to the pyramid scheme part of all of this. The first lawsuit was in late 1972, when Mind Dynamics was investigated for practicing medicine without a license, as well as fraudulent representation of the potential benefits of participating in their coursework. The next followed swiftly in February 1973 when Avon sued Holiday Magic, though my sources that I found don't say why they sued, but it does say that they did. One claims that it's because Holiday Magic employees distributed leaflets accusing Avon of good squads and paying off the district attorney's office, which is bananas. I don't really have any sympathy for Avon, obviously, and I've already done a full video about Avon and they're a train wreck. If you wanna see that, it's got its own thing on the channel already. But I don't feel sorry for Avon, but this is still messed up. However, it's in June, 1973, when two massive lawsuits and William Patrick's death tore the company apart. We'll start with the lawsuits and pyramid scheme allegations detailed in a 1973 New York Times article. Here's what it says. One of these is the complaint against his operations by the staff of the Federal Trade Commission, which wants to have the whole sales program of the Patrick companies enjoined. The taking of testimony in that case was finished this month, according to Joseph Brownman, one of the FTC attorneys. It began in November, 1971, when Mr. Patrick and many of his executives claimed the protection of the Fifth Amendment and refused to testify. This was ironic to some who had followed Mr. Patrick's meteoric rise, for he has sometimes been contemptuous of constitutional privilege. If the FTC enjoins Mr. Patrick's sales procedures as its staff lawyers have asked, then he can appeal through the federal court system. During the delay such appeals will produce, he can continue to operate, but if the final decision should be against him, he will no longer be permitted to use his sales program. Just as serious is the litigation between Mr. Patrick and the California Attorney General's office, which has filed a series of suits that attack his pyramid sales plan in all his companies in this state. Mr. Patrick was so stung that in December and January, he bought full page newspaper advertisements across the state to attack Evel J. Younger, the Attorney General, with the charge that Mr. Younger is trying to get publicity through the suits to buttress a try for governorship next year. Mr. Patrick also sued Mr. Younger in federal court, alleging deprivation of property rights. So if I'm reading this all correctly, and I think I am, then this means that William Patrick actually sued an attorney general because essentially he was pissed off that he was being investigated for being a pyramid scheme. And no surprise here, it's not just the FTC that Patrick had problems with, but the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and even the Market Court of Sweden had issues with how Holiday Magic was operating. These days, even when pyramid schemes are rampant, I wish the FTC took more action against them. So to see the FTC cracking down on Holiday Magic is fantastic, but it really makes me all the more curious as to how illegal they were in the first place. One source says, the company was termed as part of the big three scams in a 1974 United States Senate hearing before the consumers of the Committee on Commerce that dealt with pyramid sales. 1974 hearings before the Congressional Oversight Panel of the Federal Trade Commission described Holiday Magic as a multi-level marketer of cosmetics that used an unfair and deceptive pyramid distribution scheme. Holiday Magic was also labeled a pyramid scheme and a multi-level distributorship by the United States Bureau of Domestic Commerce in their 1976 published book, Crimes Against Business, A Management Perspective. 
The big three, I believe, by the way, were Amway, Costcot, Interplanetary, and Holiday Magic, though the article doesn't specify, so I could just be making a false assumption here based on who I think was in the largest amount of legal trouble in the 70s. There are others mentioned from different sources, but as for Costcot, it sold mink oil-based cosmetics, so that was their gig. Plus, it was owned by a man that previously worked for Holiday Magic, and he was sentenced to jail time for owning a pyramid scheme, so I guess that kind of tells you a bit about the values Holiday Magic promoted. And I guess we can retroactively tack this one onto the MLM family tree as well that I've been growing. One website that focuses on the legal cases against MLMs went into a bit more detail about the case specifically, and this is what they had to say. The FTC administrative law judge held that the activities of Holiday Magic were false and misleading and did constitute an unreasonable restraint of trade. The commission held that the marketing system of Holiday Magic was essentially a pyramid scheme and was a false and misleading trade practice because the system predicated on exploiting others to participate who, because of the very nature of the system, had virtually no chance to earn a return. It was also false and misleading of the company to encourage the expectation of distributors to receive a return on their investment. So unsurprisingly, it looks like not much has changed, I guess. It feels like every MLM out there could really kind of fit this description of misleading trade practices. Now, despite Williams's death in June, 1973, these allegations continued to surface and ultimately led to the death of the company Holiday Magic as well. Although I do also strongly believe that his passing played a big part in it too, because what's a cult without its leader? Now, to get a feel for just what the hell made this company fall apart, we're going to take a look at a 1974 article from the New York Times. In it, the paper states that on April 2nd, 1974, Judge Cloyd H. Burke approved a consent decree which permanent enjoins the holiday, I'm guessing they meant holiday magic complex of corn tails from operating a pyramid, assuming they meant a pyramid as well, marketing operation, and sets up a fund for the restitution of individuals defrauded by all of these companies. So first of all, oh my God, the New York Time Machine articles have so many spelling errors, but whatever, I think I butchered that pretty okay. Second of all, the article explains that not only was Holiday Magic a pyramid scheme, but they even issued promissory notes that sold stock in connection with the scheme. An SEC spokesman at the time even said he couldn't possibly estimate how much the company would even be able to pay out because bankruptcy was a very real possibility for Holiday Magic at the time. They had a liability to over 30,000 people, so this wasn't chump change. We're talking tens of millions of dollars, even over 100 million that Holiday Magic may have had to pay had they not gone under. However, it wasn't until two years later that we saw some serious consequences finally surface. On July 2nd, 1976, a bankrupt company and four of its former officials were indicted yesterday on charge of fraudulently obtaining millions of dollars from thousands of investors in a scheme to market cosmetics throughout the country. The 35 count federal indictment in Manhattan charged that company, Holiday Magic Incorporated of San Rafael, California, carried out a pyramid promotion that bilked investors over a nine year period that began in 1964. The company's former president, Ronald R. Nocera, who is 45 years old and lives in San Rafael, was named as a defendant in the indictment, along with three other former officials of the California company. The others were identified as William Dempsey, 42, sales consultant to the company's president, Melvin Christie, 31, an assistant to the president, and David Smile, 30, who headed the company's New York operations. According to the indictment, thousands of men and women were lured into investing in Holiday Magic marketing plan in the belief that they were joining an established distribution network that would enable them to earn substantial incomes by selling cosmetics. But the indictment said their only real hope of recovering their investment was to recruit others into the scheme. Robert B. Hemley, the prosecutor who presented the case to the grand jury, said that Holiday Magic held numerous formational meetings that were conducted in a revival meeting atmosphere by rehearsed professionals who spoke from carefully prepared scripts, using high pressure sales techniques and exaggerated claims. 
As a side note here, I was able to actually find William Dempsey's obituary, which states he did work for Holiday Magic in it. I don't know why you would state that in your obituary, but that's, uh, that's there. Another source says that Melvin Christie was acquitted and the two others pled to lesser charges, but otherwise there's very little information about it, or it's just tricky to find because it's been so long. However, what makes this MLM an MLM absolutely worth covering isn't just its ridiculous leader, pyramid scheme operations, and cultish atmosphere, but how this case has impacted MLMs to this day. Holiday Magic has basically become an example for the government of what not to do and a glowing example of consumer fraud too. Books have apparently referred to it as a pyramid sales organization and one of the first pyramid marketing companies in America. The House of Representatives have cited it numerous times as an example of consumer fraud. Pacific Law Journal also suggests that the Holiday Magic decision largely influences the Coscott interplanetary decision we mentioned earlier. So what a time to be alive, right? When MLMs were actually punished and those higher ups involved got jail time and those badly scammed were reimbursed, like wish we could see that today, but you know, pyramid schemes at this point are a dime a dozen, unfortunately. But moving on, it's also been used as an example in graduate level criminal coursework to analyze the nature of corporate scams. Raymond J. Falsinski from Yale Law School even went as far to describe it as perhaps the largest pyramid scam of all time. Here's what he had to say. The Securities and Exchange Commission charged Holiday Magic with taking more than 250 million from 80,000 investors. In return for investing up to $5,000 in the company's products, investors were granted the right to recruit other investors who were then granted the same type of franchise right to recruit others and so on in what amounted to an endless chain or pyramid. The SEC investigation found that Holiday Magic's marketing plan required a large non-refundable headhunting fee for the right to recruit others and placed little to no emphasis on retailing. The SEC also found that 90% of all investors were inactive and that the active members averaged a total return of less than $100. Concluding a 10 month investigation of Holiday Magic in 1973, Bess Meyerson, then New York Consumer Affairs Commissioner stated, the evidence we have compiled indicates that Holiday Magic is not a company that sells cosmetics, but a carefully worked out scheme to keep increasing the number of people who can be deprived of their life savings. Victims all over the United States have gone into debt, lost their jobs and their health through participation in these pyramids. Now looking at it today, it looks like the new giants are like Herbalife and Amway and they're way bigger than Holiday Magic ever was. But I will agree with him that that is a ton of money to take in a relatively short amount of time. Like seriously, this MLM wasn't even around for 10 years. Plus 250 million divided by 80,000 investors means that each investor paid an average of $3,125, which is a lot of money to lose too. But regardless of if you think that it's the worst, there's one thing for sure. This type of bullshit is what helped pave the way for Amway and the infamous 1979 Amway decision that legitimizes multi-level marketing as a viable form of marketing. The unfortunate truth of this is that it wasn't simply squashed fast enough. So much money was made and so many people did get away with the pyramid scheme that even though it seems like there were consequences, it clearly didn't stop other companies like Amway, Avon, Herbalife, LuLaRoe, Unique, and the list goes on. And it's not just pyramid schemes either, but like these weird MLM type cults. In a way, I feel like he set a standard, a horrible, low and infuriating standard, but a standard nonetheless. Now, there are other sites that argue William Patrick's politics were also super messed up, while most just start his story off as we know it from the moment in the garage. I was able to find one video on YouTube that is supposedly of William Penn Patrick himself speaking about happiness and success through principle, like his book. In the video or like the audio, he reminds me of like every MLMer that I've ever heard. He says a whole lot of nothing. At just about five minutes into this audio, here's what he says. Ask not for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. The great teacher has said, know the truth and the truth will set you free. What is free? Nothing, and yet everything. To be free is to be free of fear. 
Only knowledge can eliminate fear. In the presence of knowledge, no courage is required. In the absence of absolute knowledge, courage is required to act. Belief and fear are bed partners in the absence of knowledge. Now listen, I may not be highbrow enough or sophisticated to understand this brilliant man's words, but what the fuck was he actually saying? He goes on to ramble like this for several more minutes, trying to explain the relationship between knowledge and fear and uses an example of a soldier and completing missions and I, I don't know. Every time he says knowledge, I think of, uh, what is that guy? Like the Thai cruise guy or whatever. That's like here in my Hollywood Hills in my Lamborghini garage or whatever. <laughs> I know that's not what I should be thinking about, but knowledge. knowledge. You can have knowledge and read a book a day. And this is my Lamborghini in my garage in the Hollywood Hills. God help me. This is literally why I do not record videos late at night as my mind goes to really weird places. But what is pretty obvious here is it's a bunch of obvious statements repeated over and over and over again with this moving emotional violin behind it. And it's so damn cringy, I couldn't help but roll my eyes about it. He even says around eight minutes and 15 seconds, if you do ever want to go find this audio for some reason, since my purpose is not to enhance my ego, I will only give you the principle. Men do not make principles, principles make men. These principles are not of my creation, but are of creation when man began to walk the earth. Again, maybe I'm just not smart enough to understand this, but how is this supposed to sell me into wanting to do a pyramid scheme? I love how also at around nine and a half minutes into this audio, he says that he isn't going to give us these principles that he said he was going to, but he says this line of like, hey, look, I'm not perfect, but let he who has never been dishonest throw the first stone. Like, it, it just makes my head hurt. Like, this is not who I wanna take business advice from, just saying. Owning up to your mistakes is one thing, but he kind of acts instead like this is a whole, you can't call me out because you're not perfect either. Just don't say you've been perfect, Patrick. You've scammed thousands of people. You're probably one of the farthest things from perfect. And the irony of it all is you died in a private jet that was purchased from the money of all those people you scammed. Maybe just like, don't try to be a philosopher, just stick to your day job of scamming people, which was apparently what you were pretty good at, unfortunately. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's video. I hope you guys found this at least a little bit interesting. I know diving into old MLMs may not be nearly as exciting as the new ones that we know and hate today, but I think this is still something really important to look at and cover especially since this MLM has had such an impact on how other MLMs that are currently active do operate to this day. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. If you're new here, please subscribe so you can see more content like this from me on every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you want even more content from me, including all of my social media, podcasts, sources that I use to create this episode, links for everything will be in the description box down below. So again, thank you so much for making it to another video. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.